All right, now it's time for part two in our little adventure on making a challenge lock. In this one, we're gonna talk about the different tools that you're gonna to need, or uh, yeah, there's some substitutions out there and you can figure out what you want for your substitution on tools, but uh, nothing I say here is what you absolutely have to need. This is kind of like the uh, minimum of what uh, I use and uh, how I make some pins. So, well, what I'm going to start with showing you is a couple of taps here. Um, this first tap is a, if it'll focus there, it's a 6-32. And this size tap works perfect for the larger diameter locks like we're going to be working with today. And then this other one I have here is a 440. And this 440 tap works very well in master locks and American locks, anything that takes the uh, smaller diameter pin. And those are generally the two taps I, I use, guys. Um, and uh, they work out pretty well. So some other tools that you're going to need. Well, you're going to need some needle files. I just got a few of them laid out here. Um, you can tell that these have all been pretty well used, but... Uh, you know what they're gonna work just fine another thing I use is little saw blades uh, I got a hacksaw blade here um, this is a, a 32 uh, tooth per inch and 32 tooth per inch is about the uh, what I would call the best as far as um, you know hacksaw blades go for making pins then this one right here is actually an exacto uh, razor saw and uh, I'm just not using a handle on it and this one has right around uh, 42 teeth per inch and it's much narrower so you can make uh, finer serrations and then just another little uh, you know about a 30 uh, tooth per inch uh, mini hacksaw blade there and you know I just stuck a little handle on it just to hold on to it easier. So those are the basic uh, cutting tools that we'll use to uh, make pins. Uh, another important thing to have is sandpaper, and I'll go over that later. 400 works really well, um, especially if it's been used a little bit. If you have 500 or 800, that would work perfect too. Um, if you have 800 though, uh, used probably won't be ideal. Uh, Another tool that you're going to need is a Dremel or any type of tool that you can use as a uh, pin lathe. Uh, I like the Dremels because I can set this one at about 30,000 RPMs and that seems to be uh, about perfect for, for my purposes. You can use a collet like this, the standard collet that comes with it, or you can use an adjustable toolless chuck, which I have one of those here. i got to dig out for you. There we go. That type of chuck. We'll be using both types of this chuck during this video. And, well, you'll need your vise. You'll need a pair of pliers. And you'll need a drill. Um, you won't need that drill bit that's in it. So I'll go ahead and take that out. We do need, however, some drill bits because in this series we're going to be making some pins, pin and pins. And that size drill bit works very well. It's actually out of a, a numbered set from, uh, you know, Harbor Freight. It's a little bit smaller than a sixteenth of an inch. Sixteenth of an inch I find is just a little bit too large. Okay, so I got a couple of drill bits set out there. All right, and we're just about ready to go on uh, loading this up and making our first pin. Um, okay, so let me go ahead and take this out of the vise. And this is the uh, top, we would say, of the lock. And in the next video, I'll be showing you how to take this off and the uh, threading of the chambers. The other thing I'll be showing is threading of the chambers on the plug and I'll be showing you countermilling as well. 
or at least my method for counter milling. I'm not saying it's the best, it's just the method I use, guys. I'm not going to say anything's the best because invariably somebody's going to come up with something better than what I can do, and I am going to learn from that and adjust my methods accordingly. So let's go ahead and bring out this vise far enough that I can fit the Dremel in it. And we'll come back to that in here in just a minute. Now we're ready to go ahead and uh, start uh, working on uh, lathing up some pins, as I like to call it. Uh, my makeshift pin lathe, which is, you know, just a uh, Dremel and a vise. And it works out pretty good for me. Uh, but I did leave one thing out of the previous segment here. Um, if you did want to, uh, or don't have any of the tools to make uh, security pins, this is a uh, pretty good alternative here. This is a Lab uh, Mini Durex uh, security pin kit. There's the name of it right there. And this kit has a lot of different type, or, well, a lot of different sizes of security pins in it. Um... It's got some shorter uh, serrated pins, some longer serrated pins. You can see where I've gotten a few of them mixed up here and there. It's got some of these really long spools. And it's got some uh, really short spools. It also comes with some extra springs, which is uh, pretty handy. Especially when making challenge locks. But uh, yeah, uh, if you don't have the tools and you still want to make some challenge locks, this is a good route to go. So. I just wanted to throw that one in there and and some of my custom pins that I do like uh, my uh, secrets uh, you know kind of like uh, sneaky little uh, T pins that I make I make them out of these I'll just uh, grind off the top of the spool drill a hole in it and uh, do a T pin but I'll be showing you guys how to do that uh, later um, probably not in this segment but uh, most likely in the third segment of this. And in the uh, third segment also, I'll be showing how to counter mill and uh, tap the uh, chambers of the lock and taking the top off without destroying it. Or also in the top, if you do happen to bend it, what to do to get it back on with uh, a little, not very much trouble. So let me get this out of the way. And we'll get this out here where I can get to it. And we're going to go ahead and we're going to start working on some of the key pins first. Okay, I'm going to have to adjust to get this where I want it. And still have a good view of what I'm actually doing. Yeah, we'll just go with that side there. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and just slide a key pin in here. Bring down my chuck a little bit. I'm going to rotate it just a little bit to make sure that pin is on center. If that pin is on, off center, you're going to wind up with a uh, kind of a little bit funky offset spool. Unless you're trying to make a little funky offset spool. And since that call, it's getting a little bit worn out. I'm actually uh, tightening that down some. So the first pin we're going to make here is we're going to make a, well, we're going to make a spool key pin. So I'm going to go ahead and zoom in on that real quick. There we go. And spin up the Dremel. Now what I'm using is the uh, hacksaw blade. Since it's a little bit wider, it can remove more material a little bit more quickly. Now what I'm doing right now is I'm just kind of scraping back and forth kind of even out the inside of my spool here. 
The next thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that you have a, a little bit of like a 400 grit sandpaper. And you kind of want to use the sandpaper to uh, even out your tool marks. I didn't have that pin quite centered and you can tell that that uh, spool is just a little bit out of round. I didn't have it perfectly centered up in there. All right, so we'll go ahead and take this one out. So that's what happens when you don't have it perfectly centered up. Is you get a slightly off kilter spool. But since this is a demo, I'm going to live with that. And I'm going to pick up the other long key pin. That looks like it's nice and straight. Still nice and straight. Okay, this time I want to make a uh, serrated pin, but this time I'm going to do it uh, with uh, wider serrations. So uh, once again, I'm going to use the hacksaw. <laughs> See, there's what we didn't want to avoid. I didn't have, or there's what we wanted to avoid. <clears throat> I did not have that thing in there tight enough, and it spun out on me. But that's possibly also partially due to the fact that uh, due to the fact that my uh, inside collet there is getting a little bit worn out and I just haven't changed it out yet. I've got more of them here and there. Okay. After that little uh, slip up of uh, shooting the uh, pin out, now we've got a nicely formed serrated pin with slightly wider than average serrations. Okay, so we're going to go ahead and stick that one there. And we're going to go grab one of the shorter key pins. Now the shorter pins are a little bit more difficult to get nice serrations on is they're a little bit more difficult to get uh, centered up into the Dremel. <clears throat> and you get a little bit less to bite onto when you're uh, rounding them up. And I'm looking around here for something and I don't see it. I thought I got it out of my drawer. Let me look again. Ah, nope. I did get it out of my drawer earlier. I just dropped it on the floor. But uh, this time we're going to be taking a look at uh, doing this with uh, the little uh, X-Acto knife or razor saw.
the whole purpose for the sandpaper, once again, is I'm rounding off the tool marks. And that makes it easier for the pin to work in a threaded cylinder. Okay, and there's our little uh, serrated pin there. Very fine little serrations. Almost looks factory. That little X-Acto knife does a fantastic job. Okay. Um, well, what's next? Well, let's make a uh, tapered key pin. Those can be a little bit tricky to get uh, perfectly centered. That one looks like it's just about right. Okay. Come on, camera's refusing to focus now. That's about as good as it's going to get. All right, to do the uh, tapered key pins, you just need a flat file. And you just need to run it on there enough to get a slight taper. As you can see, if I can get it to focus here a little bit better, there we go. As you see, one of the things you run into when you do that and you don't have it perfectly centered, you're going to run off with a little bit more taper on one side than the other, but uh, that's negligible. It's actually so close to center, you're not going to get these perfect. Yeah, that collet's getting a little bit worn out. It's almost time to change it up. Um, let's see here. I've got two more key pins left. That one looks nice and centered. Okay, nice and tight. And on this one, we're just going to do, let's do one serration. One quick little serration there. And that one's nicely taken care of there. Now on this last one, let's, uh, let's make this one a uh, short spool. How about that? Okay, and generally when I do spools, I generally always use the hacksaw blade. So we got a nice little spool for that last key pin. But in a nutshell, that's just uh, serrated pins and spool pins, guys. 
They're extremely easy to make and very effective if you get them nice and sharp. And uh, one other thing I found is uh, ways to vary the serrations. Okay, so next up, I'm going to have to uh, change collets out after I do part of this pin. Is I want to show you making a T pin. If I get this lined up just right, you don't want to see any wobble on that. I don't see any. Okay, now we're going to go in and make a T pin. And on T pins, I'll generally always use my, uh, well, file. There's one exception to that I forgot to mention. Sometimes if I want to get a nice good start, I'll start with my hacksaw. And there we go. There's the short part of a T-pin. And if you're just making a like a long, thin T-pin driver, then that is all you need to do. And you leave this part right here up against the spring. Um, so let me switch this out and show you how to turn that T-pin into, say, a pin for a pin and pin or for a drunken spool. So what I need now is, I'm looking for it on my desk, and I know it's not on there because I put it in my drawer. I'm looking for my adjustable collet. And that rounds up in there quite nicely. Okay, we're going to tighten that down real good. And I'm going to go back at this one with my file once again. All right, now we've got a very nicely made T-pin. If I can get the camera to focus here, I know I'm really close to my camera, there we go. Really nice, nicely made little T-pin. That will work for either the inside of a pin and pin or as a drunken spool. In this case, I think I'm gonna use this one as a drunken spool. And uh, let's see here, that one's gonna go into chamber two sure why not i'm not worrying about the uh, binding order right now so this is just for uh, demonstration all right my next step is i want to make well i want to make a pin and pin so what do i do well first off i want to start off with a uh, you know just a blank uh, pin didn't need to be a real long one I can go ahead and chuck this into this chuck here and push it into where it's 
Nice. Sorry about that, guys. Had to take a phone call there. But in the meantime, I just went ahead and changed my uh, collet here. And I didn't like the way it was sitting inside of that uh, the adjustable collet. So I got my drill bit and time to go. And the name of the game on that is Slow and Steady. All right, so let's go ahead and take this one out. All right, and we've got a nice neat hole all the way through. And just to verify, now the uh, T-pin I made, a little bit too big for that hole, so but that one was going to be a drunken spool anyway, so let me go ahead and set that down. Grab another pin that I want to use as my pin and pin portion. And I'm going to use a longer one this time. I'm actually going to use a, uh, a key pin. And I'm going to try to barely snug it in here. Make sure it's even. It's not always going to be even right away. That's looking pretty straight. Let's tighten it up sometimes and check it again because as you can see when I tighten it up it started to wobble. So I'm going to readjust it here a little bit with it tight. That looks pretty straight, so give it another little squeeze. Another little rotate. And another squeeze. Alright, so let's go ahead and make another T-pin. This is going to be the inside of the pin and pin. And before I take it off of the uh, Dremel, I'm going to stick my outer collar on just to see if it fits, and it fits nicely. So at this point, we can have two things. We can have either a uh, pin and pin with the uh, T-pin portion below, or we can have a pin and pin with the uh, spooled portion below, or serrated, whichever you want to call it. Uh, in this case, we'll do the, uh, the latter. So i got to take this out. Take my chuck off, put my other chuck back on. This is a different one than the other one, by the way. I just had it sitting next to it. This one's been filed down a little bit too much, but uh, I've used the heck out of this one. And this doesn't really matter much if we don't have it centered up perfect. Because all we're doing is we're taking length off the pen.
Okay, a nice sharp fold on your paper here. And we just sand off our excess material there. So, like I said, that part didn't matter if it was flat or not. But uh, as you can see, we got a nice sharp lip on this. So that will catch nicely. Um, well, I'm going to do one more thing to that pin. So I'm going to take the outer collar. And I'm just going to thin the outer collar just a little bit. Okay, and when this is put together now, it'll have the shape of a mushroom spool. So let me go ahead and stick that in here. If I can pick it up. There we go. Okay, a nice shape of a mushroom spool. And the reason why it's pushing up, it's pushing against my thumb there, but... Uh, That'll give it a little bit to catch and a little bit to draw out once it catches. All right, so let me stick that in here. Uh, let's see, I'm gonna put that one in. Let's go with chamber one for the heck of it. And uh, as far as pins go, the regular pins, that's pretty much all I've got to show you here, guys. Um, I know there's different types of T-pins out there, like a wedding cake pin. All that one is, is you take a little bit material off at the, more material off at the tip than you do further up, and you just kind of stair step it. And you can do each stair step with your uh, hacksaw blade. Um, so that's pretty much it for this segment, guys. Let me show you what we've made so far. Besides a little bit of a mess on the table back there, but that's not a biggie. And then uh, the pins that we've cut so far. Um, now I've got, uh, let me put this down here. I'm going to have a drunken spool here. Um, I'll need a wafer. I've got wafers, so I'm not going to cut my own wafer. I've done it before. Then, uh, we've got all of our key pins made and we got a few of these, uh, drivers made, but, uh, the rest of these drivers we're going to be doing with uh, different type, um, uh, pins that we can make. And uh, we're going to be making them out of some um, different materials other than, you know, your recycled pins here. Um, different materials that I do have is different thicknesses and types of brass rod and tube. And it is very handy. So that's all we have on part two, guys. Uh, feel free to tune in on part three where we'll, uh, we'll be finishing this lock up and... Uh, you know, we'll be uh, on our way. You'll be seeing some more uh, pin types. Stay safe. Don't do anything illegal. And as always, please like, comment, and subscribe.